Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and we're back again with another Spirit Island video. Today, we're going to be playing a little bit of Fangs against England 6. Now, Fangs is one of those spirits that is very aggressive coming out the gate. It uh, has a lot of high tempo, and so typically you would think that kind of spirit is going to struggle against an adversary like England, which has so much resilience. And playing the very standard way that you might against, you know, maybe like a Prussia or a Sweden, probably won't get you the same level of success that you would against England. So let's see if we can adjust our strategy and uh, handle what they've got to give us. Uh, board B, uh, this board looks like it has two different terrains that we could get a quick pocket on, and we happen to explore one of them. So, since there is only one building adjacent to land number 8, if we kill this explorer, then it will not build, and it will not blight. Now, for us to do that, we're going to have to open up with a 2 near the jungle and a teeth gleam from darkness, which is a good opening, right? But it does uh, mean that we're going to have a little bit of trouble dealing with the four. I don't foresee us wanting to uh, use Ranging Hunt turn over turn again and again. And so I don't think I'm going to do the G3 opening where you reclaim. Instead, I'm going to give myself an extra power gain to see if we can draft ourselves into a solution for the four. And a drift down into slumber is a solution. I don't think uh, Dahan Defend is our long-term plan, right? So, like, Call to Migrate is certainly not it. We would only ever take Call to Migrate if we already had great defense options, but we don't. The Defend is more important than the Dahan. Gift of Power, um, under less pressured circumstances, I would certainly consider it here. Screen Disease, probably not. We generally don't struggle with raid restrictions because our presence is so mobile. Okay, yep, we get to kill this, and um, I'm going to kick this guy out, but I don't think I'm going to move the presence, because if the wetlands does explore, I'm going to want to add another beast here into the six. We uh, would then probably um, add a presence, transform it to get three in the land, pull in the fourth to kill the explorer town, and then there's only one adjacency here, so this would not build as well. But alas, we got the sands. Okay. So there's two near the jungle. Um, regardless of which one that we kill, it will still build. And this one here, we are we could just defend it with a drift down. I think I'll do that, and then I'll plan on dealing with this one with a ranging hunt. So we could add another one now, and then transform, that's three. But I think we can get away with it for one turn without doing that. So I do want to get beasts onto the coast. Right now, everything... I mean, I guess this four, kind of like if you were to draw a line here, is the dividing line between the coastal and the inland side. And everything is inland right now. And the coast is very important to have control over. So we're going to go right there. We don't really care about getting a ranging hunt, though it would be nice just to... If, if we... Well, actually, sorry. If we play this drift down, then there's no way of us hitting the damage portion anyways. Ooh, domesticated animals go berserk. Very nice. It's a very good card here. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely the pick. The two damage doesn't even kill a town, so that's pretty sad. And it's a, it's marginal. It, well, I mean, I guess this gives us a plant because of the animal. So, um, they're both good. I mean, but the. Domesticated Animals does let us hit the Frenzied Assault with that Moon and Fire. So it's very helpful for those elements.
Another option is actually, well, I think maybe playing a prey on the builders. We could prey on the builders right here in the three. We could just use our ranging hunt to get our presence in. However, we do have to consider that we need to get fear. And so something like a terrifying chase uh, would get us to fear. We could ranging hunt into the three, terrifying chase this guy out. And then maybe set ourselves up to do a ranging hunt in the six. Push and explore inland, okay. Beasts generate fear. Oh man, we just lost the free fear there. That's sad. Um, But pushing the beast is fine. So the beast lets us do additional pushes. It does not... Uh, it's not a requirement for the push. So we'll bring him up here. We'll leave our presence because we can hit it with the domesticated animals. And... We are planning on going up here soon anyways. Let's just... Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, here we go. Get ourselves some fear. Get ourselves that fear card. Excellent. So we got a domesticated animals right here. And we will ranging hunt the six. Could this be a good time for us to sneak in a reclaim? And perhaps a drift down into slumber gets forgotten for a major? We're 100% needing to go for majors, and that's why we're going for a top track build. Tiger's Hunting is always a great major for us to pull. But domesticated animals go berserk. Uh, we don't have guaranteed the elements for this ranging hunt, despite us getting all the setup for it. So I think it's just a good time to get a reclaim in. Ooh, great options here. Settle into hunting grounds is fantastic. Um, you know, the, the uh, threshold is trivial. It perfectly matches the elements for our ranging hunt, which we want anyways. But the Wounded Wilds turns on its assailants. Well, uh, we have the free plant, free animal. So all we need is a fire plant card in order for us to threshold it. Now we only have one additional card play for a while and there is no additional card play here. Hmm. Tropical. The eight fear is quite tantalizing, but settle into hunting grounds is just that good. It's safe, it's reliable, it's pretty much always playable. So it, whereas Wounded Wilds must target a Blightland, and then it, it has all these requirements and stipulations before it does anything at all. And then the Threshold is like a win more. It doesn't actually make the power better. It's like, hey, if this thing is already good, then it goes from good to great. But it does not make a, 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 a middling effect become a good effect. And yeah, I think this Drift Down is a safe card to forget. We'll go here, and we definitely want to be transforming our presence now. So we can go for domesticated animals, and we are one short here, and that's fine. We're, um, yeah, we'll, we'll kick um, uh, some beasts into this land. We'll probably just ranging hunt this land, and then we'll probably go settle into hunting grounds in the two. And so we need a two-element card. Teeth Gleam seems just as good as any. This two near the jungle 
Let's see, I don't, I don't think there's any land that's possibly pocketable anymore. And so really, we'd just be playing this just as like a filler. Uh, we can easily toss the town in right here, and it'll be defended just fine. Beast kill explorers. Ooh, does that stop the... No, because this is going to build, and then there will be two adjacencies. But it's almost cool. And we get the free Dahan ad here in the three, so that way the land will fully clear. Um, all right, time for some good old escalations. And the question is, how much damage can we do here in uh, B2? Because we want to make sure that uh, the land is effectively dealt with. We don't want to take a blight there if we can avoid it. Because we've already got a line that can potentially get us there. So the settle into hunting grounds is going to be 2 damage. Uh, plus we are a badlands and it's a range zero ability, right? So it's basically a 3 damage power. We're going to add a beast with the teeth gleam. I don't have a beast to gather in, but we are also a beast and a badlands. So we functionally have three beasts and a badlands, which will allow us to kill this. So we don't want to go there. So I think we go into the four. Okay, all right, Teeth Gleam right here. Get that beast. Down the line, um, getting that three fear is a, an important thing to remember that that's a, like a thing that we can do. So we're gonna add a presence. Hold on. Actually, we, since we're playing Settle, Settle plus any animal card will get us a threshold. And that's all good and dandy. Come in here, kill this. And yeah, we're just going to like be ping-ponging the, the same two beasts back and forth, taking care of both of these. So we need to draft into a solution for land number one. Hmm. Pact of the Joint Hunt. It's a decent card. It's just not going to do any damage, especially in land number one, where there is no adjacent uh, Dahan anyways. Something like here, there be monsters is just a straight up fear bomb. Hmm. Whereas voracious growth means that we could just let this land go and just remove the blight in case we get that coastal back to back or that jungle back to back. And that's actually pretty compelling to me. I think this is just an important card to hold on to. Now, if we were to take this, I'm, I'm thinking about if we want to get ourselves into, at least getting ourselves up to three card plays, just by gaining this here, because the animal gives us no marginal benefit. But getting up to the third and the fourth energy is pretty important. I think we're just going to keep on pushing top track for a minute. Two energy is not a ton of energy, you know? And let's see. What do we pair this with? Maybe we pair it with, like, a terrifying chase. Just because it produces a, a good chunk of fear. Let's get ourselves a fresh beast in... I guess we don't need the jungles immediately, and just having that available would be nice. Okay, keep things clean here. 
be two fear, three damage. Oh. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, because I allocated this uh, ranging hunt twice. Hmm. Well, in that case, I care much more about the two than I do the seven. So let's uh, let's clean up this land number two. So we'll go out this way. And yeah, we can't move it. <laughs> Game keeps on reminding us. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six buildings. Oh, no, no presents here. Uh, there's a lot of things that would solve this, like Strife and a Dahan, you know, Dahan Defend 2, anything like that um, would all freely solve the 7. Like that. Hey, check it out. So, in my opinion, it's a pretty low risk move. Um, okay, I think we just take a Blight here. Uh, cause we're, yeah, this, this is going to be tricky. This is the tricky part of the game. Uh, remove a beast and do some damage. So it's going to do two damage, which is not enough to kill anything normally, but we can at least pick up a town and an explorer here. Um, there is... Oh, there is beast, so that means we get to push everything. Okay. So I could add a presence, transform the presence, and just kill this town. Hmm, but getting this voracious growth off here in the four is important. Now, the benefit of doing this is that it also denies the eight from building, and so it really narrows our threats that exist. Ooh, jungle hungers. Jungle hungers paired up with a teeth gleam is thresholded because we have the free plant on our tracks. And that is very good here. It's not enough to save the one, but it is very good here. It's cheap too, and I like cheap. I think this Prey on the Builders, as much as it is nice, I don't think that's the winning ticket, or maybe this Terrifying Chase isn't, now that we have the, the heavier hitting cards. Pushing effects generally are not where you want to be against England. Hmm. Yeah, we definitely want to hit this three energy. That'll allow us to do things for the rest of the game. I mean, one option is that we just kind of make a sacred site here on the five and just kind of let this all be. I'm not sure if I like that, though. But we do have the Voracious Growth to remove some Blight. Yeah, it's just really tricky timing, trying to get this Jungle Hungers off. But maybe we just go for a Jungle Hungers right now in the four. Go like Jungle Hungers, Voracious Growth, targeting the four. But, yeah, we'd probably just wind up just killing off three towns here in land number one, removing the blight in land number four, and just kind of being sitting in an awkward position. This is where the, the, the tempo starts to lose its luster. We don't really have to deny a build here in the eight, because we have a range zero defense on hand. Or we could just hit it with the settle. We could settle for that. <laughs> OK, 
Could also go here and just kill this town just to produce a fear. And then pair up. Go here, bring in the beast here, push the sacred site out to the fore. That way we have the sacred site and... Well, if we have the sacred site and all this, then we're actually an animal short. Being able to jungle hunger's voracious growth. So if we play these two cards, we're not going to threshold our ranging hunt. Basically, if we play this two near the jungle, we're good for it. Two near and jungle hungers. It's a decent pairing. Kill this town. Both of these guys have to originate from a jungle, so we could originate from the four. Maybe I'll just throw a beast here into the six in case of every beast dealing two damage event happens, and that would save the land. Oh wait, that means I need to transform. So we go one here. Probably bring in two. Yeah, these two lands are our big lands. Uh, free beast add. Very nice. And we gotta defend one per to Han. So there we go. Solves the six. Yeah, we're definitely gonna put this in the one because this is a big old problem land. Like, ooh, skipping explores and builds and lands with beast. Very nice. Now, this land is already solved, so we don't need to worry about that. And that's actually going to pocket out the eight. Because we're going to get a build here. This is only going to be one adjacency. Is the four savable now that we're skipping the build and we're strifing off the city? It's going to be hitting for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... We jungle hungers that actually kills all the towns and yeah. So if we strike that off, we're good. Uh, what is it asking me for? Probably something with the event once per. Yep, we get a town instead of an explorer. So if we get an explorer here, that'll means it'll hit for six, and that's defendable. So I think we go here. And ah, uh, there's two near. I guess we'll go here to the one, since we already have a line that's set up for the three. And if it doesn't work out with like another explorer, we just hit it with a uh, um, ranging hunt. Well, that was a very fortunate set of events for us. So definitely getting this hit with a voracious growth is very important to me. So that way we can keep on hitting it with our other effects. But we do have a turn of levity where we can... Uh, I mean, honestly, maybe just reclaiming into a jungle hungers. Because it's going to build, build. It's going to triple build. Right? One, two, and then escalation. Going to be our last stage two as either a sands or a mountains. Okay, we're getting a lot of activity here. Jungle Hunger is just going to be a good card no matter what. And if we get one more energy, then we can go Jungle Hungers plus Teeth Gleam for the Threshold. Ooh. Guardian Serpents is a card that I always really like. It's more defense, but it also adds beasts, similar to domesticated animals. And isolation is very strong against England. Yeah, Lure of the Unknown is, is not it. I'm going to go the Guardian Serpents route, because we're going to be up to four energy, so... 
Um, go here. I think I'll just transform this guy up here. Uh, if we ever need presence back here in the eight, we can, but I'm just gonna leave that out there for value. Or better, actually, let's let's just kill off this town right here, because after this builds, it'll maintain only one adjacency. So we'll undo that. We will undo our growth for the turn. And we'll add our presence over here. Transforming. And now we have a place to actually use our ranging hunt. Lots and lots of free fear, and we can move both of these beasts in towards the coast. So that's nice. Inland land gets a free to Han. Um, well, it's always worth pairing these up when you get the opportunity. Not something that we've been focusing on, but it is nice. Uh, we can just skip the Ravage and salvage this Strife. It's good, because I don't have a plan to deal with it for a little bit. Alright, definitely going to use... We could use our Jungle Hungers right here, and it would full clear the land. Over here gets us one more fear because of one more town being killed, but it does not solve the land. I think the, like, gaining a whole action from solving that land is worth it. So let's clean that up. This land's going to be fully defended, but it will not fully clear. We're going to be just shy on damage to clear this. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So I could add a beast, and we could come in for two damage, and then it would full clear. But it would still build because we have adjacencies and... So we'll probably just domesticate animals a couple turns in a row, and maybe we'll invest some actions into it later. This land over here, uh, we're going to hit with the Ranging Hunt first, right? So we can go town, kill town. Uh, maybe we'll hit it with a Prey on the Builders. We have some options there. But I do think laying the Beast here for random downstream value is good. All right, sorry, there was a knock at the door. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Uh, looking at a loss condition in B1. How are we going to deal with this? Hmm. Defend here. Um. And I really feel like we just have to prioritize taking this here. Probably have to play a settlement to hunting grounds in order to do some damage to deal with just to just to prevent one town from existing. So that way we are not left to the whims of the invade of the uh, of the uh, event deck. There's all kinds of events that could add one building. That would be very bad for us. Hmm. Now, once I get through the third car plane, especially this reclaim one, things will be a lot more comfortable. But I feel like we largely have the cards that we need. So by gaining the extra three energy, it gives us the flexibility to reclaim if we desire. So if we do something like this. Killing off a town. Defending here. I think we'll be okay. Not a great position, but an okay one. That also allows us to kill off this town with our ranging hunt. Yeah, 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 I know my presence can't move. So it clears it. And then... It will build again there. So we want to leave two beasts behind. So we can only push one beast out right now. 
I'll push one this way, just in case. Want to kind of just make sure we have a good flexible range of options available to us. I think the best place to push... Ooh, only one damage. That's really sad over here. Killing a town instead of a city. Um, yeah, I think we just push this into the jungle. Oh yeah, our presence is Badlands, so we can uh, we can do it right there. Hmm. Is removing this town valuable by creating this pocket back here? Because there's no way that one fear card is going to fully deny this. We already saw the Ravage skip one. And the Ravage skip one, we don't even have enough adjacent to Han for that to qualify. I think being able to full-on deny and explore here into the jungle... Uh, is amazing. Oh wait, actually because of the Badlands, we do still get to kill the city. That's nice. And now we flip the Blight card. I wonder, maybe it's better to go up here because this voracious growth that we've been sitting on all game, never using, <laughs> maybe we'll get around to actually using it. Uh, yeesh. I guess we could just kill our presence beast, but I think all these excessive beasts all around the island, we could kill off one of those instead. Probably this one. We're planning on just hitting this with uh, like a domesticated animals. Doesn't have a lot going for it otherwise. Wait a second. No, because if we add the blight here, which is where I want to add the blight, I need to be able to grow back in. So we need to remove... Let's get rid of mm, this beast. Blight here. This is one of those Blight cards that I actually really don't mind because it has such a small cognitive load. You know, it's not hard to, like, remember what the thing does. Alright, Innate, because this is a Badlands, we'll clean this up pretty well. In here, we would either have to double defend or, like, pray and domesticate. Which is a lot of work. I think that's definitely gotta be the choice. It's it has to go somewhere that we have presence. Thankfully, land number one is not active right now as far as threatening a ravage. So we have a little bit of uh relief from pressure here. Let's see, with three card plays, we could do a Jungle hungers, domesticated animals prey on the builders. That would not allow us to kill a city here. Due to a lack of a third plant. Well, I think in every situation we grow here. If I reclaim, that puts us up to 6 energy, which is enough energy to go double major. Uh, double major plus 2 near the jungle. It allows us to go... Which actually, like, these guys threshold each other. Well, no, this um, this one's thresholded for free. But um, Settle will threshold the jungle hungers. So that is quite nice. Ah, if only we had one more energy. I will go double major plus a domesticated animals. Kill off the town. Let the town rebuild, defend it. And that would be a beautiful thing. Maybe if we get sap here. No such luck. That's okay. I don't think any of these are super central. We're gonna take the gift of living energy. It'll give us the it'll give us the ability to uh 
It'll give us the ability to possibly play more mages over the course of the game. So now we need someone like a Prey here. Guardian Serpents isn't going to cut it. Maybe we Ranging Hunt this guy to make a Sacred Site, and then we do like a Voracious Growth. That does leave us with risk here by under defending by three, but we do have a terror level three fear card and those tend to be good. But getting that voracious growth off will let us threshold the jungle hungers, which will cut this land down to just the striped city. So that solves that problem. The Voracious Growth will remove some Blight, which, especially if this doesn't work out here, we're definitely going to want that Blight removal. I think this is better than going for a Prey. Prey just feels so safe, and even if the bad thing happens, we're okay. Stage three, add a Blight without Cascading, but we can just sacrifice stuff. We'll just add a Blight to the one, because even if we do Cascade, we're going to be at one Blight left on the card. Okay, some free Explorer kills. Always take it. And actually, with that, it builds, it hits for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, oh, there we go. Free Defend 2. Solves that problem right out. Even helps with the counterattack. So if we just... I guess it doesn't matter how we allocate the damage. We'll be able to kill a city town now. Ooh. We can just full clear this right now. It'll build and then die. Skip all build actions in coastal lands. Great. That skips the entire extra build. That means we lose a fear. What the heck? Great. This is working out just fine for us. Kill the one without the strife. And... Yeah, this is... It's, I mean, it's one of these two, but really it's going to be the one. Although, actually, maybe we get rid of the four, and then we can clear this with a ranging hunt. I mean, they still got the adjacency build, but it does get us that fear... Removing the Blight from the one really will not... It's We're never going to change this for, to an unblighted land. It's going to have to be dealt with uh, by other means. Considering doing a Guardian Serpents up here... Ranging Hunt, kicking things out, Guardian Serpentsing... We hit that Reclaim 1. And I would not mind hitting this with the Jungle Hungers, killing off a city and two towns. So let's see. We have a uh, Guardian Serpents here. Jungle Hungers here. And as long as we get... Um, a plant card, and we're good. So if we go here, reclaim you, because that's the double moon, and we have a second plant already. We have two animals on our tracks, plus one from Guardian Serpents. That hits that threshold. So if we hit a plant, I mean, if we have a plant, fire, animal, that will get us all of our innates. You know, that's, I mean, if we take the bonus three energy, that's going to cost me seven. Leaves me at one energy for the turn. But if I use settle into hunting grounds, then I can't move. 
I don't think we need to settle. I think we just want it next turn for this. It would actually be a decent turn to play the, uh, the push card that we got rid of. I mean, Teeth Gleam is just like a generically decent card and it'll just get us three fear. And just gaining three fear, considering that much fear left in the deck, is honestly pretty good. So we're looking at one, two, uh, five. So we could do that and then we'd end up at even energy. Let's just keep doing this. We have the card that we need. We probably don't need to draft into any more solutions. Okay, no bonus damage, and this is definitely going to turn into nothing. Uh, there is a four, sorry, there's a three in four chance, 75% chance of this being a Sans card. And even if it's not a Sans card, like, whatever. I think we're well set up for a fear victory here, especially with all this free damage coming in. Picking up this city. Town. Oh, okay, I guess it's just three fear, but that's a whole extra fear card. And now we're only five fear away from winning. We've got uh, one, two, three, four coming out of this Jungle Hungers, plus another three coming from the Teeth Gleam. So yeah, that is a GG right there. Now we're just going through the motions. Uh, removing an invader from this land will prevent the build. All right, Threshold Jungle Hungers in the land number one. Get ourselves three fear off of this Teeth Gleam. And that is a fear victory against England Six playing as Fangs. Yeah, Fangs is super fast and it can crush things like Prussia and you know Sweden and all of those very fast adversaries, but it's also durable and it's capable of going into majors to take on England as well. So, very flexible spirit, uh, very popular for good reason. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have yourselves a glorious day.